Hello, welcome in. Today we are going to be randomizing my TBR for the Magical Readathon. If you don't know the Magical Readathon, it is a kind of fantasy RPG themed readathon made by G over at Book Rose, where you create a character who is studying at a magical university for some kind of magical future career. My character this semester is finally coming back to her studies to become a Faye Wilds cartographer after a few semesters of taking electives. Um, we learned how to be a wild form druid last semester, which I think is going to be a really useful skill for a Faye Wilds cartographer to have, but this semester we are finally back to the cartography syllabus. So we need to take seven classes and read seven books in April, and I am super super excited to let Storygraph randomize my TBR again. I actually do have to make a few small adjustments to a couple of the reading challenges to make them randomizable. So I'm sorry G, I hope that that is okay, but I have been waiting to randomize this TBR for months. I wake up every day with joy in my heart looking forward to doing this. So um, I wasn't gonna give that up and I had to do what I had to do, okay? So basically how it's gonna work is I'm going to go onto Storygraph and when you load the page for Storygraph, it automatically generates five books from your TBR list that show up like on your homepage. So basically I will be picking a challenge and then whatever book pops up on that list that fits that challenge will be the book that I read in April. So the first class that I need to take is Elemental Studies and we'll be learning how to call lightning. So we are going to open Story Graph. And this is the first list that it has given me. Would we consider a glowing rose a light source or should we be looking for a more traditional kind of light source? Oh, this has stars actually, stars. I would say that is a much more traditional light source than whatever the glowing rose is. So let me check if I have access to the Babysitter's Coven because that's another thing. If it's a book I don't have easy access to, I don't want to buy a bunch of new books for this. So I'm just checking to see if my library has it. Okay, my library does does not have a copy. My library does have a copy of Uprooted, so that will be the book that I read for Elemental Studies. This has been on my TBR for so many years. It is a fantasy story about um, like a village where every 10 years they have to send one of their young women to go to this like really powerful wizard of some kind. I'm not entirely sure, but it sounds super good. The next class that I need to take is shape shifting where we're learning about mimics. So the challenge is, this is one that I had to adjust a little bit. The original challenge was to read from an author who blurbed your last five star read which is obviously kind of impossible to randomize because there's only one author who blurbed my last five star read. So I am adjusting this a little bit to say the first book that comes up that is blurbed by an author who has been a five star for me in the past, right? I think it's still gonna be a little challenging actually, but um, definitely easier than it would have been. So none of these have blurbs on the cover that I see. And I, I am just gonna use the cover that Storygraph provides because I don't wanna go in and Google all of these individually. Um, okay, Every, the thing is is that everybody is getting blurbed by newspapers and not by, okay, Kathy Lee Gifford, I don't know. <laughs> We're not getting a lot of author blurbs actually, which is kind of sad. Deborah Harkness, I don't think I've read anything by Deborah Harkness. Oh, A Discovery of Witches. Um. I haven't read that yet, unfortunately. James Patterson, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I have such beef with James Patterson because when I worked at the library, he takes up so much shelf space. There's like 10 shelves of all of James Patterson's 5 million books. Like why does he have so many books? It's absolutely infuriating to me. Anyways, um, back to the topic. None of these are being blurbed. This is blurbed by someone, but I can't see it because it's blurry. Higgins. I don't, Higgins is not bringing to mind any authors that I like. Is this a blurb? No. Eleanor Lippman, I don't know who that is. Okay, okay, Criminal Element. Chessie Prout? Sarah Longin, I don't know either of those people. What is this? Sarah J Mass. okay. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> I hate that Sarah J Mass is the author that I have to like label as being my previous five star read author, but <laughs> she was, okay? And we can't lie about that. The Falconer by Elizabeth May, which is actually a book that I've been really looking forward to for a really long time. 
This is like one of the first books I'm pretty sure I put on my TBR when I started booktube. This is, I'm pretty sure, like a historical fiction fantasy. It's set in Scotland and I think it has to do with fairies. And the main character is like a fairy hunter because the fairies are bad. Which, oh my gosh, this works so well with my career because I'm gonna be a cartographer for the fae realms so I need to learn about the fairies, right? The next class that I have is Animal Studies where we are learning about pebble ducks and that is a book that has a yellow title which should be pretty easy to randomize. So let's go ahead and refresh. Okay, no yellow titles so far. Oh my god. A Tyranny of Petticoats? Okay, actually I'm super excited about this. This is a short story collection with like historical fiction and fantasy stories about really cool women, I think. And it's edited by Jessica Spotswood who wrote the Born Wicked trilogy. It's about witches and I'm really excited to see this anthology that she's kind of put together. Okay, and then the next class is Astronomy where we will be learning about constellations and the challenge for this I had to adjust. Again, the original one was a recommendation based on your zodiac sign. So to like look up a video or a list that somebody else had made of, you know, zodiac based recommendations, choose your zodiac sign and that's your book. Obviously that's not super randomizable, so I have changed it to the first book that pops up that I can find some way to relate to my zodiac sign. Um, I'm a Gemini, so I feel like this is going to be kind of hard because it's kind of niche, like twins. A book with like maybe two faces on the cover, like some kind of dual aspect situation going on. It would be much easier if I was like an animal zodiac sign, but um, unfortunately that's just, you know, the way the stars aligned when I was born. Okay, now there's a lot of threes on this page. I wish I was a, a three, <laughs> a triplet, but I am unfortunately a twin. However, Don't Want You Like a Best Friend has two girls on the cover and they're wearing very similar dresses. This is a romance. It is a sapphic romance. It is set during the Victorian era. What more do I want? And it's about two debutantes falling in love. It sounds so good. I'm so excited. This will be my astronomy class. My next class is an alchemy class where we will be learning about transmutation circles. So the challenge is a book with a circle on the cover. So I'm gonna refresh and see what kind of circles we can get. Ooh, okay. This is so vague actually. <laughs> because any of these could be circles, technically. It looks like the roses are circular, this hat is circular, this, there's a wheel here, that's circular. I think we need to lay some ground rules. <laughs> With this, I'm gonna say that like the flowers and the hat don't count because they're not really like intentional actual circles. And then I'm also gonna say that this sticker doesn't count because it's not technically part of the cover. It's something that was added to the cover. So I'm gonna go with the wheels on A Song for the Wild Built. Um, I think that this is about a world where we've kind of like made robots, but then they've grown so apart from us and they don't really wanna be involved with us anymore. So I think what happened is that they sectioned off like the forests so the robots can go live in the forest and like be away from humans, which just sounds really cool. And I've heard such good things about this book. So I'm really excited to read it. So that will be my alchemy class book. The next class I'm taking is inscription and we're learning uh, typography. So that challenge was to write down the names of three books and draw them randomly, which I have done actually, because I did want to make sure that at least one of the books that I'm reading in April is from my must reads list. Since I'm already a little bit behind on this, I don't think I'm gonna be reading one in March. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose one of these randomly. And it is The Daughter of Dr. Moreau by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. I'm so excited. I love Sylvia Moreno Garcia, so I have been really looking forward to reading this book, but I didn't want to read it until I read the actual Island of Dr. Moreau, which is like a classic, kind of like a sci-fi novel, and I read it for class a few semesters ago, so finally this book, I can read it. Basically, this book is a lavish historical drama reimagining of the Island of Dr. Moreau set against the backdrop of 19th century Mexico. It's gonna be so good. I'm so excited for this. The book that made me fall in love with Sylvia Moreno Garcia was Mexican Gothic, and I think that this has a really similar kind of premise, and I just love that she's taking these like kind of class gothic horror stories and like reimagining them with a Mexican cultural history because I think that taking them out of their 
original kind of white European boxes and using them to explore different sides of history um, is really, really, really cool. So I am very excited for this book to be my inscription class. Okay, and then the last class that I will be taking is a demonology class where we will be learning about pacts and contracts with demons. And the challenge for this is to read a book that you did not pay for. So theoretically, this should be very easy because as long as my library has it or it's on Everand or something, then it should count. Oh my god, we have an emergency. An emergency alert? Oh, there is no danger. It's a test. <laughs> that scared me. Okay, well, this alarm might be going off for the rest of the video. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but it's kind of it's kind of creepy. But we're just going to go ahead and do this last challenge. Okay, so let's check Grave Maidens. I don't know if they're going to I kind of hope they don't cuz I'd rather read The Changeling. <laughs> Maybe I will just Oh good. We don't have that book. The Changeling. Do we have The Changeling? We do. We have an audiobook of The Changeling, which is perfect. The Changeling, as far as I know, is kind of a horror story, but I think it also has elements of like magical realism and like Goodreads says urban fantasy mixed in. I'm not entirely sure. And it's about a man whose wife, I guess, like vanishes into thin air and he goes looking for her. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna read it because I don't think I can succinctly like paraphrase this plot line. Um, it says, his quest, which begins when he meets a mysterious stranger who claims to have information about Emma's whereabouts, takes him to a forgotten island, a graveyard full of secrets, a forest where immigrant legends still live, and finally back to a place he thought he had lost forever. This captivating retelling of a classic fairy tale imaginatively explores parental obsession, spousal love, and secrets that make strangers out of the people we love the most. And that it is a thrilling and emotionally devastating journey through the gruesome legacies that threaten to devour us, and the homely, messy magic that saves us if we're lucky. I have actually been looking forward to this book for so long. I almost put it on my books I must read in 2024 list, but I ended up putting his other book, Lone Women, on there instead, but it was a toss up. Like I really, really wanted to read this too. So this worked out so perfectly. I am really excited for this TBR. Thank you for hanging out with me today while I randomized my TBR. I love doing this. This is the most fun I could possibly be having when making a TBR. <laughs> so yeah, I hope that if you are also doing the Magical Readathon that your TBR is going well also. Let me know what you are reading and how you picked it out. I'd love to know how you make your TBRs for readathons. And, and also let me know what your character is up to this semester. What kind of classes are you taking? I would love to know. And yeah, thanks for hanging out. I hope you enjoyed this video and I really hope I get to talk to you soon. Bye!